<laughs> thank you very much for uh, for joining me. I appreciate it. Okay. And all of your uh, wisdom and experience and knowledge that you're transferring to me in this difficult time of podcasting and videoing. <laughs> it's all good. It's all good. It's, it's, it's going to be a good time. It's going to be a fun time. It's going to be a great time. This is the best episode ever. This, uh, is the, this one here. Steve's the editor and I'm going to get him to edit that out. Um, <laughs> so, um, now typically I kind of talk to actors um, in this uh, about, you know, the journey and what it is that they do to make it in the industry. Um, you're obviously a filmmaker and a, and a bunch of other bunch of other things, but I don't believe you're an actor. But I'm keen... I want to. I wouldn't mind getting into it. Well, but... there you go. <laughs> uh, I did not know that about you. Um, yeah. So, first of all, why don't you um, talk to me, well, tell me about what are all the strings to your bow? What is it your, what is your ex- expertise? Uh, okay, so I've pretty much narrowed it down to three things now. I think it's essentially director, cinematographer, editor. Okay. Um, at first I thought I was a bit of a producer, I realised how much of a shit show it is. Can I swear on this podcast? Yes, of course. Oh, shit, 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 fucking shit. Good. Uh, <laughs> that's all out now. Um, so... Producing is a really hard gig, uh, okay. especially here in Australia, where there's physically not that many creatives, uh, whereas compared to LA or any of those very, very big hotshot sort of countries, uh, states, I don't know, um, you know, it'll be a lot easier to start a career there. Sure. Uh, because it's just all you're surrounded with. Whereas in Australia, I think it's, it's, it's first of all, a much smaller pond. Um, there's a massive rabbit hole anyway, but right. um, yeah, it's a much smaller pond and everything is looked at as a favour. Uh, so the fact that, you know, an actor or, or a director is talking, it's like, oh, such a privilege, like, thank you so much for doing this favor for yeah. Whereas in LA, it's just like, no, you know, money's going around, it's already a business, it's just so much easier to pitch ideas. Sure. Um, producers kind of have to play that game of, oh, thank you so much for doing this for us, thank you, thank you. Okay. You know, it's, it's a bit harder to establish a professional image here than yeah, sure. it is in LA. But anyway, massive rabbit hole. Okay. Yeah. So, cinematographer, director, and editor, is there one out of the three that you have, I guess, a particular preference mm. for? Well, I went to film school and started making films to be a director. Okay. Uh, I ideally want to be a director. Um, but after making my first professional short film last year, Bimbalo, which Danny worked on, thank you, Danny, um, uh, that proved to be really difficult. Okay. Um, and now I'm sort of directing proved to be difficult? Directing, okay. yeah. Writing, directing particularly. Uh, whereas I think directing music videos and stuff is a lot of fun. And I think now that I'm directing a few music videos now, um, it's proved to be a bit more interesting, a bit more fun. Because it's physically less work and less challenge, it puts me in a flow of like, yeah, I can do this. And I can look at a short film later on. Yeah. But first I need to harness the, the base directing ability, you know, through music videos, through commercials, through simpler, shorter projects. Okay. Whereas right now, well, yeah, at first, short film is, is physically a lot of work, you know. It was a nine-day shoot, um, 30 plus actors. Yeah, you didn't really, like, <laughs> for, your, for your first professional, um, professional, it was your graduate project for actors, right? Yeah. Um, for your first kind of short, you didn't, you didn't really. <laughs> you didn't make life easy for you. It was not easy at all. No. I think on the day that we shot our piece, your cinematographer walked out. <laughs> that, the day that you were on was quite possibly the second worst day. Okay. Uh, I'll tell you about the first later. Um, but that that day, uh, yeah, uh, our cinematographer bailed out. He hadn't. He barely slept uh, the night before. We were literally spending the because whole. Because you as a director was like working really hard on a nine day shoot. Or? Uh, look, to be fair, yes, I was probably working. I was working too hard um, because I didn't have my shit together, and uh, I don't want to place the blame on anybody uh, because you know before anybody else is going to take ownership because it is my project. Um, I essentially didn't have my shit together. I should have been more on top of communication between all departments. But essentially, what have happened was. We spent the night shot listing and storyboarding the night before that scene, right. which is a massive problem. You never want to be doing that. You want to have that shit locked down weeks, months before, uh, which we did. Oh, well, massive learning experience. Um, we had shot listed, but we hadn't, um, but there was still lots of questions. Uh, so that came down to communication on my end. Okay. Um, so basically, we got, we'd gotten 
very little sleep. Uh, we stayed the night at my ex-girlfriend's house, uh, which again, you know, was so, so far away from the set. Um, and we had basically just spent, I think, till four in the morning storyboarding. Oh, wow. Yeah. Because yeah. it, was it was a relatively early start as well. 7 a.m. or something. Mm -hmm. yeah. Interestingly, I mean, from an actor's perspective, what, what you say it was like one of the most difficult days or the worst days out of film. It was probably one of the, the funnest days I've ever had as an actor right. on set. It was so much fun, which was which was amazing. Um, so you know, you've obviously directed that and you've made that. Um, what's the? Have you? Where are you at with that short film now? Obviously, the main point of it was to submit. I'm assuming for your graduate project. Have you got plans for that short film post? graduate submission? Yeah, so the plan was always to make that film for afters uh, and work on it again outside of afters, um, potentially turning it into a proof of concept for a web series or for a feature film, but I'm realizing that's like so out of the park for me, uh, right now at least, you know, yeah, I sure. physically need more experience directing before okay. I tackle anything bigger than this. Um, although the more I've reflected on it and the more I've sat on it, I'm thinking, this just needed to be a learning experience. Okay. So many things had gone wrong with it. And so many things did not match my expectation with it, which in the first place was way too high. Uh, it should have been a seven minute short film, turned into a 20 minute. Uh, it should have been like seven scenes, it was 20 scenes. It should have been a 10 page script, it was a 30 page script. Right. You know, like I'm learning now that like, okay, <laughs> back the fuck up <laughs> for a second. So your third career as an editor, you didn't, Edit. Not 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 the actual editing of the film, but you didn't edit what you were putting into the film before you made the film. Uh, as in, as I didn't edit and take stuff out and be like, okay, well, that's not needed. It doesn't add to the storyline or whatever. Uh, so you you kept adding and adding rather than editing it, editing it down. To... In the writing process, uh, yes, I did. I, mm -hmm. I didn't spend enough time cutting it down. I spent like a few days cutting it down, but even then, it was nowhere near enough. Yeah, you know? and I didn't at the time. Uh, being a first first time writer director, uh, I was a bit egotistic. I was like, no, sure. this is my baby. I've worked on this for a year. I can't possibly cut it down. Despite all this advice I was getting from teachers, from um, uh, from mentors, and everything, uh, I, I just didn't listen to that advice strictly sure. enough. Okay. Um, to be fair, the advice I was getting wasn't that director. Just oh, cut it down, but like not really many suggestions. Like I couldn't see past the wall of. It's my short film, why should I cut this down? Uh, but what I needed to notice was that I had written this as a feature film, and that is the problem. That, right. that was this massive obstacle for me, is that I've written this as a, as a feature film, but I haven't considered the time of a short film. Uh, so there were physically enough scenes, if it was dragged out, to be a feature, uh, which is why it turned into a 20 minute short film, right. that felt so, so rushed. Like there were physically so many scenes and so many things happening but it should have been dragged out. And okay. if it was dragged out, I'm trying to say it would have been a feature film. Uh, because you've got 30 page to 40 page scripts to be turned into one hour films. Mine was 30 minutes turned into 20 minutes, like do the math, that's a very compressed and hectic short film. Yeah, sure. Um, so I feel like in that aspect, this is what the obstacle is for getting into, fe in, into festivals. And I feel like this is the problem getting it into um, pitch decks or uh, web series. So now that I'm able to critically reflect on that a year later, uh, I know what I need to make next, I know what I need to write next, uh, what is more realistic for me as a, as a you know, entry level writer-director. Um, Do you think it's kind of given you a reality check on what it takes to make film? I think, uh, I was talking about this um, I think on one of the other episodes, um, around the fact that we live in this world of immediacy where we can log onto our phone and we can get food delivered within five minutes or you know we can have 15 60 second videos on tiktok that we we have this immediate gratification i mean we can get on a dating app and get sex yeah. within 15 minutes uh well maybe easier for me as a homosexual <laughs> than as a straight man Damn you. <laughs> uh, but you know we live in this world of immediacy and i think one one thing that perhaps i didn't even as an actor appreciate it's just how long the filmmaking process is. Because as an actor, I turn up on set for one day or, or more, if I'm lucky, mm -hmm. um, to make something. But 
the process of going from writing to casting and all of those things could be years in the making. Just about, yeah, yeah. And uh, it's really something that stays so internal because um, I do see that, you know, uh, not many other uh, departments will see the work that goes into directing or producing. Yeah. Uh, it's physically really demanding um, and it takes up a lot more time than people think. Mm -hmm. uh, and the more I work in corporate, in uh, brands and businesses and stuff like that, the more I realize people really think that filmmaking is just oh, point your camera at things and do it. Like, oh God, no, <laughs> oh, it's so much more work than that. Um, obviously in pre-production, yeah, like you said, it could take years. Sure. It could literally take years to get a, 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 even just a short film done. Uh, you're locking down things like location, cast, um, agreements and don't even get you started on all the, um, the council approvals that you've got to get through and how wanky most councils are, particularly right. Oh my God, fuck right. <laughs> like <laughs> just no one likes their job in a council. Like, so no one really wants to answer emails. No sure. one really wants to, uh, let alone when you're doing something for free, uh, and you're not paying people, which sucks. Um, but such is the world of filmmaking, unfortunately. <sighs> this is what I'm trying to it's get. It's all for the exposure. <laughs> look at all the things I bought with the exposure. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's so shit. Oh, but like, look, I've done my fair share of it, and you have obviously as well. Yeah. Um, and for that, you have my eternal gratitude. Thank you. Um, oh, okay. <laughs> it's it's just one of those never-ending battles, which I'm still like, you know, and you know, we're still we're both at points where we're getting paid for stuff that we love, but. I'm sure we're still also at the point where we're still doing stuff that we love for free. Correct. Um, you know, I still very much am too. Uh, and I probably won't stop for the rest of my life because that's Australia. Yeah. So, so on, on that note then, obviously, you know, it's, it's clear that your passion is filmmaking and directing and uh, uh, cinematography, etc. Um, do you, what, 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 what do you do to pay the bills to afford you to follow your dream at the moment. So there's a very nice balance I have in my life right now between uh, jobs, working for clients and working for friends. Okay. Uh, I find when I work with my friends or the people I make my friends, um, I am able to get my best stuff out because okay. there's no strict time limit. There's no, because literally, I mean, with most corporate and brand stuff, you know, they, they are on a very strict budget uh, uh, and, you know, very strict time, time frame. So what I find is when they have a bigger budget, and therefore more time because they can afford to hire you for more days, you are able to physically get much better work out. Sure. So sure, when you're working with friends, you know, you're not going to get paid, but at least the time thing is out the window. And what is that work that you're doing at the moment? Um, for corporates or for, for um, brands and stuff? Yeah, what is your job? Oh, sorry. Okay, so, so currently I'm working at a production house. Um, so I make uh, commercials um, for bigger brands. So at the moment I'm working for uh, White Claw, um, the seltzer company, um, Omo, the laundry detergent company, Coroma, yeah. the bathroom company, all these just random brands okay. that just come to us for jobs. Um, so exactly. as the, so in this production company, you are an editor or you're? Editor, cinematographer, sound designer. So I'm okay. a very all-rounded person and color grader. Okay, so, so you're at least very fortunate that you are working in the industry that you want to be working in. Totally, yeah. Um, okay, yeah. yeah but not creatively. Uh, so this is the thing I'm trying to get at, right? Okay. There's a very fine balance um, between work that you will get paid for and work that will creatively liberate you. Um, eventually, you know, in my late 20s, the idea is to merge the two together so that I'm at a point where I'm getting paid really nice money to, uh, <laughs> to write or to write and direct or to direct um, music videos or ads that I am creatively liberated by. Sure. So at the moment, the stuff I'm shooting and editing uh, is really uncreatively liberating. Okay. Um, some of them are, some of them aren't, but like I'm literally just pointing my camera at fucking laundry detergent bottles and you know, like, sure. <laughs> you know, it's not that liberating. Like I already know the setups in my head. I know what a client is asking for and it's just a matter of, hey Steve, we need you to create and you know, they'll just show me another commercial so just copy this. Okay. That to me is a job. Um, but you rent a pay, right? Yeah, exactly. Like totally. And I'm not complaining about that. But uh, there is the balance that I'm trying to get to in my late 20s, uh, or whenever that is, uh, no expectations, whatever, whatever. Um, but um, there is that balance that I'm trying to get to where you know, I'm getting paid to create a 
liberate myself. Sure. Which is the dream for everybody. I mean, like, you know, we all want to be doing what we love 24-7, getting paid for it. Um, but I've accepted the fact that it's going to physically take me a long time to build my portfolio to get to that point where clients and stuff trust me with that vision. Mm -hmm. And like, fair enough, you know? Um, I want to do that. Like, I don't think I'm worthy of that success of, you know, doing everything you love and getting paid good money for it until you've been through the shit. Uh, and I can't even call what I do shit. Like, I still love it, you know? Um, but I know that that dream is going to take a while. Yeah. And I totally respect that. And I respect that, that process. Okay. And for some people, they just get it immediately. Like, good for them. But, uh, not common. You know? No. But I mean, you, you are at least, you know, working in the right field. So you're able to, sure, it's not creatively liberating, but it's the field that you want to be in. It's at least in the sphere of where you want to be, which you know a lot of people. I think a lot of actors work hospitality and mm -hmm. um, you know pulling pints, etc. Yeah, definitely. But I think even in every uh, second job or uh, whatever side hustle it is that we have, um, I think there's always an avenue to expand on or to deliver something to your creative work. Sure. Um, for example, maybe a hospital job will teach you a lot about people. Uh, me working retail taught me a lot about uh, sales and it taught me a lot about how to work with people and it taught me how to, uh, I, I guess, sort of break out of my shell and you know, be able to communicate with people. So I made me a much better uh, and effective communicator. It actually really helped me become a director Yeah. because all of a sudden I knew what I was telling people, which is, it sounds, yeah, I feel like before that I was a bit unconscious with delivering what I wanted and I kind of still am. <laughs> but oh, look, I think just it's experience. I think life in general can it can take a while to to figure out how to communicate with people effectively and to get what it is out of them that you want to get out of them, um, which is obviously a very important skill as a director to have. Um, but sometimes, you know, a lot of that can come with time as well. So, yeah, totally. We'll see. I mean, I didn't have any issues with the direction on the short film last year, so... <laughs> Sweet. <laughs> I had so many problems, I wrote them all down. And <laughs> Look, I had some nice tuna sandwiches, face full of makeup. The whole day. Um, I didn't have any lines to memorise. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so easy. It was, it was a wonderful... But honestly, experience. you got so many compliments for that performance as well. Uh, for anyone that doesn't know, which is everybody, <laughs> um, uh, he's essentially... Uh, acted as a mime, so we put him in a full face of makeup in a lovely uh, black and white outfit and, and played so, well, so, so well. Uh, it was actually one of the most complimented characters in that short film. Brilliant! It was so good, like literally had everyone laughing in the theatre. Um, mm. By theatre I mean like we, we had a screening um, sure. for all the actors' um, grad films. And yeah, no, it got a lot of great feedback, uh, which is why I really wanted to make this its own short film outside. Okay. Um, so, very exciting. Very so exciting. let's let's talk about that then. Um, so you've kind of already said that making your first short film, you've taken a step back from filmmaking in the fictional sense, mm -hmm. and now looking at more um, music videos and laundry detergent commercials, <laughs> yeah. uh, etc. So what's in the pipeline at the moment to kind of move back to that? dramatic um, short film or series type I think genre. Um, I don't know why I'm talking like this. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, because we're both still figuring out an answer, we're just both watching it. You know how I, you know how I said with experience you can start to communicate better? You know, scrap, oh, scrap no, that. That goes straight <laughs> out the window now. Um, I think, uh, look, what I'm really trying to do with music videos and ads and everything is just explore what can be done in nicer bite-sized pieces without dedicating a year to a project. Sure. Because there's physically like, I think uh, when you pump out more and more content, you just don't stop pumping out content. I think each new, by the end of each uh, project, you're learning something. Uh, whereas I think you're limiting yourself to just sticking to one project per year. Yeah. Whereas you could squeeze in five. And I mean, I know this is going down to the quality versus quantity thing, but I still think there are projects that are just better for learning than there are um, for, uh, what, what am I trying to say? Um, I'll say this, for music videos because it's physically a much less, less of a commitment, mm -hmm. like it'll only take a few months to get through, um, 
you're able to finish that, wrap that, and learn from that in a shorter amount of time, meaning you can make room for something else. Whereas a short film might take a year to make, um, and because you're just focusing your energy on one project, one set of characters, and one everything, um, I wouldn't say you get bored of it, but it's limiting what you can learn from it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, so sticking to shorter projects and then aiming for the bigger stuff later, I think is where you're going to get the best stuff, is where you're going to make a more impressive folio. Um, yeah, I mean, like I've already learned so much from just a three-day shoot, and I would have probably learned the same amount of stuff on three-day shoot than a nine-day shoot um, for, diff for two different projects. Sure. Because uh, I think it's just that, that feeling of wrapping something and that feeling of looking back at something edited. Yeah. It's like, you know? Yeah, I mean, obviously, there will be a sense of accomplishment and achievement um, every time you complete something. Mm -hmm. um, and if it takes a year to complete one thing, then it can be a little bit... I was going to use the word soul-destroying, but that's probably a little bit, of a, it's probably a little bit dramatic. But, <laughs> you know... <laughs> A bit of it's true though. <laughs> yeah, like, but you can feel like you haven't really achieved all that much, even mm -hmm. though actually you've spent a really fucking good chunk yeah. of time developing and creating something of quality. Yeah, um, and the inner critic's always going to come out as well. Even if you, no matter how long you spent on something, it's going to be like, oh fuck, it took a year and that's all we can do? Like, ah oh, fuck, you know, you're going to point at something that went wrong. Yeah. Um, you know. And you're going to do the same thing with a three with a three month project or a one month project or one week project. You're always going to point fingers at something that could have been done better. Yeah. So, what's the point of time framing then? Like you might as well pump something out and learn from it. Yeah. You know, that's that's my philosophy at least. Sure. So, okay. Yeah. If we're when you when you start to move back into short films and features or whatever, is there a particular process that you have? to take an idea from, oh, I had this idea, to getting ready to shoot. Um, maybe, maybe we'll just talk about the creation process first. So sure, yeah. um, you, were, you wrote um, Them Below. Yep. Um, so after that learning experience and what you're now working on for, uh, for the production company, what's your process for creating now? Um, so, <clears throat> First of all, every brief is different. Uh, every project is different. Um, so I kind of just trust my intuition into being like, okay, this is what needs to be prioritized first. So uh, for the music video, for example, my process was I needed to understand first the song that I'm writing for, that I'm not writing for, uh, that I'm shooting for, mm -hmm. uh, and what kind of story world that imprints in my head, because at the end of the day, you know, you're being hired for, as a visionary. You know, you need to kind of go off that creative instinct um, and just sort of visualize as best you can and then communicate that. Um, so the director was already very adamant about making a very colorful world, uh, about making a very, well, splitting the worlds into two different things, um, a reality world and a dream world. Um, so my sort of spin on that was not really that unique, I think. Like, I feel like it's been done plenty of times. Okay. Um, but. I wanted to essentially just have as many colorful lights as, as possible. Um, the vision was already very sequin, nice sequin dresses and all this flamboyant stuff. Um, it looks really, really great in that aspect. Um, so I just wanted to complement that. Um, and then using my technical skill of you know, color contrasting, color whatever, whatever, mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> I was just able to talk to the director, talk to um, the production designer about everything I was thinking and everything they were thinking. So at the end of the day, the process was really just to talk as much as possible with yeah. each other, uh, which is which is great because you know at the end of the day, I think we were friends before we were uh, clients and, and and business associates. Like this this cut and dry sort of um, relationship, yeah. you know, that you're just doing for a project. No, like we, we were actually having a lot of fun with it, which is great. So I think we got the best stuff we could because we were having fun with it. Yeah, you sure. know, they weren't clients to me, and I wasn't a client to them, uh, kind of thing. Um, yeah, so it was cool. Um, whereas, in comparison, like I said, every brief is different. Uh, <clears throat> shooting laundry detergents or commercials for alcohol companies is physically going to be different because yeah. they're expecting you to deliver something that's been done thousands and thousands of times before, so, which is why it feels like a job. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> not that there's a problem with that, but um, 
it's just, like I said, not as creatively liberating. Sure. So there's that balance of stuff because that's what's going to get you paid um, because there's a market for it, because there are brands and businesses already looking for that. Yeah. Whereas no one's really looking for, well, people are looking for creative music videos, but not as frequently. Yeah. Um, you know, and that, that industry is much harder to break into. Mm -hmm. um, so that being said, um, I would have less chats with the brand, with the brand or business. Um, it would kind of just already be done in a treatment or something, what they want. Uh, so they like to work more on paperwork, you know, brands and businesses. Oh, they love it. They fucking eat that shit up. Um, so as in they want um, treatments, they want uh, inspiration, just mood boards. Right. Really, yeah. really quick kind of stuff. Same as music videos, same as, you know, uh, smaller uh, productions. But um, it's more open to, to communication. Sure. You know what I mean? Like okay. it's more about the conversations that you have. So the directing process and the creative process and the, I guess the cinematography stuff seems like it's quite a collaborative, these are collaborative type roles. And the other part of your career is editing. I imagine a lot of editing is you sat on your own and less Less collaborative, less collaborative than just kind of like headphones on and and getting on with it. Is that almost like depends on the job? Um, because with <clears throat> with creative stuff, I try to make it as involved as possible with the director. Um, so like I'll invite the director over to my place, uh, and we'll just spend the whole day, two days. Uh, like they'll stay over. We'll make like a big deal out of it. Like we're just gonna get this shit finished. Yeah. Um, I'll try to deliver my own drafts uh, in my own free time. Um, Are you talking about editing? Or? Editing, yeah. 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 Um, <clears throat> and uh, then I'll show something off, but when we're trying to lock things off, I'll be very adamant about getting the director in so that we can make those cuts together sure. because it's physically going to be so much easier than just editing new drafts and getting notes and then delivering and then re-editing and then delivering sure. again. Uh, we might as well just spend like a few days together and just whack it out because then we're on the same wavelength there. Okay. Um, whereas with brands and stuff, they don't give a fuck about you. They, they really just want to pay you to get your job done, fair enough, and just deliver whatever's next. Yeah. And for what it's worth, brands are not the most creative people. They don't know half of what goes into filmmaking, so they are just looking for a simple thing. Their notes will always be really, really simple, um, because at the end of the day, you know that you can make a, a much better ad without their notes, but they're the client. Yeah. They need to give you their notes. It's for them at the end of the day. So, yeah. Is editing um, the, the part of your career or the toolbox that you have the most experience in? Yeah, definitely. Um, I spent a majority of film school being known as the editor okay. uh, and sound designer, oddly enough, because I don't really do much in sound, but that's just what I was kind of associated with, sure. which I don't even have my own sound kit or anything, but that's getting me a lot of work now, just being known as the sound and okay. the editor. So. And is there um, a particular type of content that you favour editing over another? Uh, oh yeah, definitely. <clears throat> um, I will try to get into as much comedy as possible. Okay. Uh, mind you though, it hasn't been that frequent uh, because I've just been taking whatever I can get. Um, that being said, it's not that I don't enjoy that kind of stuff, but if I had a preference, yeah, it would always be comedy. Like I just love playing with comedic timing and everything. It's just the most rewarding thing, just making a good edit yeah, in, cool. that, in that field. Because I think like comedy is very reliant on time, uh, on, on time. Oh, yeah. And yeah, you'll, you'll definitely back that up. Uh, it's for dramatic purposes and everything, uh, a good edit with good pacing makes everything. Yeah. You can turn it into a very different film. Yeah, yeah. cool. Um, so what's your, you, you spoke a little bit about how you'd like to merge um, in your late twenties, a couple of your careers. What's your, what do you, what's your big hairy audacious goal? What is it your, like where do you want to be? Um, ideally, I can see myself, uh, shoot, well, either shooting or directing music videos, even to that point. Okay. Um, because I think I still think they are one of the most creatively liberating projects to work on because there's not much of a time frame of like a whole year to a project. Um, for, and it's a hell of a lot less stressful than directing feature films. Like 
once you get into the world of feature films, this is what like not a lot of people will explain. It's kind of hell. <laughs> it's kind of hell. For a director? Or... For a director, for a producer, for, uh, for cines. I'd say for any key collaborator on, on a feature film, yeah. if that's all you're doing, it is kind of hell because they are 40 to 50 day shoots, even longer sometimes. Um, and you're spending about a year in pre-production, two years could be. Um, there's a lot of stuff that needs to be pushed and pushed and pushed. You're, you're working around a very strict time frame, even though it is physically a lot of time. Um, it's still very, very strict. And it's still, throughout the, the year or two, still all being chewed up. So, so that's not something that you see yourself doing? It's something I want to try. I'm definitely open to it, um, but I see the amount of work that goes into a feature film, smaller feature films, uh, and they don't go that far. It's kind of upsetting. Um, so do you have like an actual, this is my goal of where I see myself and what I'm working towards at, the, at this point in yeah, your life? Yeah, definitely, definitely. Like, look, so I think that? TV series are a bit more manageable. Uh, web series are a bit more manageable. By then, I would love to have... It sounds like your goal is just to have an easy laugh. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> fuck yeah. I would love that. Um, but no, I, I do want to be working hard, obviously. Uh, but I'm just saying the physical demand for feature films is just not there. Okay. Like, I could put all my heart and soul into a feature film and I don't see it going that far. Yeah. You know, maybe a few festivals, but in Australia, not that far. Unless you're, like... Successful writer and directors or directors at that, they will make good feature films in their 50s. Like, that's how long it takes, you know. Uh, it's a very committed role, uh, feature film directing. It's a very committed role. Um, and I don't know if I can commit myself to a career for that long. Um, wow. Yeah, it sounds weird, but I, I think oh, features... <laughs> I'm 22, but like... That I'm is such so a 22-year-old yeah. thing to say. <laughs> That is such a 22 year old. I haven't had a job longer than a year, to be fair. I am going to be 38 next year. Yeah. So, into my 50s is not actually that far away. <laughs> yeah. So, to have a career <laughs> that actually spans a couple of decades is probably. I mean, I would love to be acting and making films well into my 80s. Mm. I, don't, you know, I don't really don't want to be a change manager for my entire life, which is what I do to pay the bills. Mm. Um, but yeah, such a 22 year old thing to say. You know, yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, I feel that. And you know, my opinion will probably change. Uh, it will definitely change. Yeah, yeah. But I think, I can't help but feel like features just are too much work for like not a lot of reward. Sure. You know, that's, that's what I'm trying to get at. Okay. No, that, look, I get it. Um, so over the last few, obviously you've been out of afters now for a year. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm working for this production company. If you look at your, <laughs> you're really rude then and say your limited experience. <laughs> yeah, don't do it. As a 22 it is, year old. It is. In your filmmaking and, con and, you know, short, long, medium form content creation career over the last couple of years, <laughs> yeah. um, is there anything that you've worked on that you, that you kind of like cringe over that you think, oh, what was I thinking? <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah, big time. Oh wow! Big time. I I can't help but feel like that. Like I said, uh, the vision that I had originally and pitched originally was so so different to what I actually shot. Yeah. And yeah, it, it couldn't have been helped because I didn't see the problem with the script in the first place. Okay. Um, like I said, it should have been a much shorter script. Uh, it should have been a lot more honed in. Should have had so many different plot points. Uh, there was just three different directions it was going in. It's, it's a film about clowns uh, being irrelevant in today's day and age. Uh, yeah. But then it turned into a thing of a domestic drama. And then it turned into a thing of, um, what else was there? Killer clowns, you know? It was. Like, it, there were three different plots happening. Yeah. Whereas I think the most fascinating stuff could have been either the killer clowns, a very stylized thing, or it could have been this um, very internal character building piece uh, on Bimbalo dealing with the irrelevancy of, of, of clowns, which yeah. I think would have been more fascinating to focus on one of those two things. Yeah, and I think um, your actor, Garrett, was Garrett, Gary, right? yeah, yeah. Um, would have, he was amazing, 
I think you would have been able to pull off the, you know, that deep internalized self-loathing, which you did very well. Mm. Um, I think you would have been able to pull that off. I think so too. I don't think I directed him well enough, to be fair. I, I really think I could have given him more instruction for a lot for a lot of the time because I was so pressed for time on set. Um, literally, we had booked way, way too many shots to be shot in such a short amount of time. Mm -hmm. um, it, it was just a scheduling nightmare, yeah. uh, this whole film. <laughs> Do you um, think your, um, your experience as an editor Thinking about how you could piece stuff together hindered that because you know because as an editor you know right I can if I've got these uh, angles these shots these whatever then I can create this as an editor mm -hmm. as opposed to just thinking about what do I want to show yeah so a really good editor will be uh, one working in animation and the ones working in animation that is where the best stuff is made because an editor is literally brought on as a storyboard artist. Right. As someone who's like, no, this is the shot, this is what it's going to turn into, this is the intention of the scene. So the editor is almost the director in that way. So I don't see why an, an animation editor couldn't become a film editor in the same way that they are storyboarding everything and have that vision right from the get-go before they even let the cameras roll. Sure. Um, the idea of storyboarding is that you're editing before shooting. So that you know what you want immediately, um, and you're shooting for precision, not for coverage. Right. Um, which is where I went horribly wrong in Bimbalo. I just wanted to turn it into, well, I realized my whole process at the time was actually very outdated. It's the same way they shoot massive TV dramas. It's just, oh, we're going to point out camera things and we're going to cut it all up together later. Right. That is not the vision for a short film. It's, it's going to look like a TV drama. Sure. And it did look like a TV drama. So that was the problem I had with it. Was well, look, the shot list was just too simple. It looked beautiful. I mean, visually, it was a pretty film. Mm. Um, I enjoyed working on it. It's good. I, when I watched it, I thought it was good. Mm -hmm. um, but you know, what do I know? I'm really glad to I'm hear just that. an actor. I just show up <laughs> and say nothing. No, um, I feel like I'm too <clears> critical. Of uh, course you are. This we all are. We're all super, super critical of our own stuff, right? Mm. So, I mean, I I still can't watch my own work or a self tape without thinking, oh fuck. Mm. Like, you, you just look like you're reading lines. Mm. That's how I, maybe that's why I was so good in bucket, that's my thing, I'm reading lines. Um, so yeah, I mean, that's kind of standard and, and to be expected. Is there anything that you do to manage your own mental health through this, you know, trying to make it in your career and your profession and, um, you know, kind of stop yourself from going crazy. Is there anything that you do to mm. kind of keep your mental health in check? So much. Um, first of all, this is the year that I started taking my mental health seriously. Okay. Uh, beforehand, it was this kind of afterthought. Strange thought, but like looking after myself was an afterthought. My priorities were other people before me. Uh, and really, I needed to go through a lot of shit this year to figure out who I am and what I need to do to soothe myself and to improve myself. Yeah. Um, so I really started taking that seriously. I learned how to meditate this year and oh, I learned nice. how to and on the clock, the most rewarding thing ever because I finally started seeing who I was and what my visions always had been, what they need to turn into, what steps I need to bring forward to bring the dream that I've always had but never knew how to action. Yep. Um, so now that I'm actually critically reflecting on myself and my actions, I'm doing everything I want to be doing now with Amazing. barely any regret. Um, and if I do regret anything, you better believe I'm on top of that shit. <laughs> you know, yeah, like nice. I'm, I'm very much, I feel like I finally got a hold over my life and that is so, so great. So to answer your question, because I know I go on all these rabbit holes. It's all right, um, I'm not the first person. <laughs> <laughs> fuck. Um, but yeah. Uh, well, you've answered it really, I mean, you meditate. So yeah. is there a, there's lots of different types of meditation. Is there a, a particular type of meditation that you do? Yeah, um, when I say I meditate, a lot of people think it's like that mm, kind of meditation, which like, sometimes. But for me, uh, it's more mindfulness. It's more so uh, looking at yourself in the mirror, uh, having an internal conversation, working on that self-talk, realizing what is immediately your, your first instinct to tell yourself, like, oh, you look shit today, or you look good today. You know, like, let that turn into the reverse of that kind of thing. 
Yeah. So my self-talk has improved dramatically because I've learned how to talk to myself. Um, and that in itself has helped me sort of clear the path and clean my room and, uh, you know, help me sort of realize what the next thing to do in my path is. Right. Uh, for example, my dream is to write and direct stuff uh, and make it onto Netflix or Stan or whatever VOD okay. platform there is. Oh, so why wasn't that your answer when I asked what your big goal was? <laughs> I should have said that because like, that's, that's actually what I wanted to say. I don't know why the fuck. Yeah, I mean, anyway, anyway. Because what I got was I want to direct uh, music videos because they're quick and easy. You know? <laughs> I don't have to spend years in pre up oh, doing a feature film. No, sorry. So <laughs> what I was trying to say there, uh, <laughs> what I was trying to say there is that that is the stepping stone I want to get to to write and direct stuff that okay. makes it onto standard Netflix or whatever All right. to get recognized. I do want to be a hot shit director at some point Good. in my life. All right, there we go. <laughs> there we go. That's that's what you're working towards. Yeah. Got it. Yeah. So what? Um, you know, on the topic of mental health and mindfulness and the shit talk that we talk to ourselves, yeah. and now that we know what your goal is, which is <laughs> you should have with, some, with yeah. some content on you know Netflix or whatever, um, it can be really easy to um, you know tell ourselves that that's not that's that's impossible. It's something that, that we're going to do. Mm-hmm. So you know, you meditate, which is great. How do you how do you keep yourself motivated to keep working towards that goal? Um, okay, motivation was a really fucking difficult thing for me this year. Yeah, uh, I can wholeheartedly A hundred percent. Like, I think for everybody, right? Like, I mean, we're, we're forced to look so hard at ourselves this year. Mm-hmm. Um, the way I spent it was to learn how to meditate and to realize why the fuck everything feels off this path that yep. I always knew I was meant to be on. Yep. Um, so, what motivated me was to start looking at ways to reward myself or started looking toward things to get excited about because I think everything in our head is really built on emotion. You know, we're a very emotional being, like we need emotion to drive us. Yeah. So there was something missing in my emotional sort of sort of world that that didn't that, that removed the excitement toward filmmaking. Okay. So I really needed to work on what the fuck that even was. Yeah. And I think the answer for that that I needed to hear was that it's still here. Um, fuck, I need to think about that actually. Like, how did I actually pull myself out of that shit? First of all, I needed to see proof that I am a filmmaker okay. and that I can do this. So I needed work. I needed a creative platform. So I started writing. Um, and. Mike the Mime, I think, was the thing that really got me to um, start writing again uh, because it was directly what I was going through. Sure. Um, and I think, yeah, when we first we haven't spoken about that yet. Yeah. So, <laughs> um, despite me leading into that multiple times. Nice, smooth, nice. <laughs> this is a good interview. <laughs> this is what a good interview looks like. Ah, uh, fuck. Um, no, I'm excited to talk about that. Then. But uh, I. So first of all, I was writing immediately what was what I was going through, and that just helped me creatively liberate um, everything that was happening in the real world and then in my writing world. Yeah, um, which is great because that making that great and me getting excited about that was one a bit of an ego boost because I'm writing about myself, sure, but it's also helping me reflect, um, and it's also teaching me new lessons, writing it and putting it onto paper, um, and realizing oh fuck, well if I have control over this character. Fuck, I literally became Mike the Mime in a way. Like, I, I sort of just okay. journaled and journaled and journaled through Mike the Mime. Um, and nice. eventually, yeah, it, it really helped, actually. Um, okay. So Mike the Mime is your next creative project outside of all of these next uh, music big, videos, yeah, etc. Next big creative project. Nice. Like, I think that is my next big break, um, which is why I've been focusing so, so much on it. Um, because I have this insane vision for it, and, which is why I had an insane vision for Bimbala too, but I didn't get that. And now I really want to make sure that I get what I want with my mind because I see it as this flamboyant, this fuck theatrical piece, uh, you know, of this mime figuring himself out um, and developing his character through just observing. Yeah. Not 
by speaking, but by just observing the rest of the, of the world and seeing how everyone else sort of operates and how they interact with him, how they look at him. Yeah. So all he focuses is on is, is eyes, is people on their phones, is people not interacting with each other, and missing the, uh, the sort of magic and love that he has in his imagination. Um, you know, so when he goes home and stuff, everything's dressed beautifully, everything's just flamboyant as fuck, everything. Uh, he sees the whole world in color in a gray, in, in, in a gray world. Okay. You know, that's, that's the premise, essentially. Cool. Um, well, I look forward to that um, coming to fruition at some point in the next decade. <laughs> <laughs> Let's fucking hope so. If we can get some money for that, that'd be great. <laughs> um, okay, cool. Um, one final question and final thought. Um, what's your proudest moment in your career so far? Uh, in my career, I think... Um, I'm, I'm tossing up between the fact that I got a full-time job because that was a massive deal for me um, this year. It's like I really, really found it hard to find the motivation to get a full-time job this year. Um, I really went from giving up on myself to getting my shit together, like all in the span of one year, which took a lot of steps. Um, but um, then there's, I'm also tossing up between the full-time job and uh, the fact that this is my first time shooting a music video. Which I was really, really excited about. Like, I mean, I've shot a music video before, but that was just run and gun, point your camera thing. Yeah. I was like very heavily involved as a DOP, like someone who needs to organize lighting setups, story worlds, yeah. and who is a creative uh, collaborator rather than just sure. a videographer. Yeah. Um, is it a music video that everybody would be able to see, or obviously everybody will? It should be, yeah. Is it, like, is it an artist, or? It'll be, uh, it's for a Triple J on Earth artist. Uh, her name's Betty. Um, and I think that's getting released, um, they said before Christmas, but I find that very hard to believe. Cool. Um, but it'll probably be up by the time this podcast is up, I would say. Awesome. Well, I'll put um, the details of the artist, etc., in the podcast notes so people nice. can see it. Cool. Um, but thank you very much for taking some time to answer parts of my questions. <laughs> <laughs> About halfway there. Yeah, nice. <laughs> um, have a good Christmas. Thank you. Me and too. I look forward to working with you again in the future. Good shit. Nice. Cool. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> oh, fantastic. Good episode. You big dork. <laughs>